Welcome back, mitochondriacs. It's another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. Today, we have an exciting new topic to discuss, and that is the concept of mitochondrial dynamics. So without further ado, let's get into it. So from a general standpoint, mitochondria are not static in the way they behave within cells. They actually are quite dynamic and they are constantly changing, turning over, dividing, fusing. And the whole process of that behavior is something called mitochondrial dynamics. As it states here, mitochondria are organelles that are able to adjust and respond to different stressors and metabolic needs within a cell, showcasing their plasticity and dynamic nature. These abilities allow them to effectively coordinate various cellular functions. Mitochondrial dynamics refers to the changing process of fission, fusion, mitophagy, and transport, which is crucial for optimal function in signal transduction and metabolism. An imbalance of mitochondrial dynamics can disrupt mitochondrial function, leading to abnormal cellular fate and a range of diseases, including neurodegenerative diseases, metabolic diseases, cardiovascular diseases, and cancer. So as you can see, this is a very important component to the general term mitochondrial function or dysfunction. Mitochondria undergo the continuous process of fission, fusion, mitophagy, and transport cycles, which determine the morphology, quality, quantity, and distribution of mitochondria within cells, as well as mitochondrial function. Mitochondria have their own DNA and need to constantly repair and replace their components to function properly. Through mitochondrial dynamics, damaged components can be removed from a mitochondrion or impaired mitochondria can be entirely eliminated by mitophagy to prevent further cellular damage. Maintaining a balance of mitochondrial dynamics is pivotal for optimal function of mitochondria and cell fate. In brief, Fission contributes to mitochondrial quality control by elimination of impaired or dysfunctional mitochondria and promotes apoptosis facing the severe cellular stress, while fusion is conductive to mix and exchange the inner mitochondrial contents between mitochondria. These help to maintain mitochondrial function. Besides, mitophagy is indispensable for quality control of mitochondria and inhibiting pro-apoptotic protein release by selective clearance of damaged mitochondria. Mitochondrial transport is also important for ensuring that mitochondria are located in the proper cellular regions where their energy generating functions are needed. At present, it has been established that each step of mitochondrial dynamics is precisely regulated by upstream signaling cascades. So I want to show next a picture of a general overview of mitochondrial dynamics. I'm going to start with this mitochondria here. So we're first going to look at how it goes this direction. And we see that two mitochondria become one in a process called fusion. And there's specific needs and improvements that happen when that happens. And then depending on the stressor or the need of the cell, a single mitochondria can actually separate through a process called fission. And then there's another process called mitophagy. What's not listed here, which will also be covered during this micro series is something called mitochondrial biogenesis which is the creation of new mitochondria, which I think is in line with talking about the entire mitochondrial life cycle. This is a, another representation of the mitochondrial life cycle. We have mitochondrial dynamics, which would include fission and fusion, as well as mitophagy, and then subsequently biogenesis, which regulates the expression and translation of mitochondrial DNA, as well as DNA within the nucleus that helps support the mitochondrial expansion, as well as improvements in mitochondrial function that have to do with the electron transport chain and ATP synthesis. And then depending on the ATP status, as well as oxidative stress status or ROS, we're going to see various mitochondrial dynamics happen, which then leads to this whole life cycle. Mitochondrial dynamics are responsible for not only its own creation and destruction and quality control, but it's also responsible for cell migration, program cell death, apoptosis, as well as the overall cell cycle for division of the cell. So as has been stated, mitochondrial dynamics are critical critical for cellular health, mitochondrial health. And when these mitochondrial dynamics are not happening as they should, that can tip the scales into imbalance, mitochondrial dysfunction, cellular dysfunction, and disease. So as stated here, over the last few years, accruing evidence established a connection between dysregulated mitochondrial dynamics and disease development and progression. Defects and key components of the machinery mediating mitochondrial fusion and fission have been linked to a wide variety of pathological conditions, such as insulin resistance and 
obesity, neurodegenerative disorders, and cancer. And stated here, the dynamic properties of mitochondria, including their fission, fusion, and degradation are critical for their optimal function and energy generation. The interplay of fusion and fission confers widespread benefits on mitochondria, including efficient transport, increased homogenation of mitochondrial population, and efficient oxidative phosphorylation. These benefits arise through control of morphology, content exchange, equitable inheritance of mitochondria, maintenance of high quality mitochondrial DNA, and segregation of damaged mitochondria for degradation. As you can probably understand, in just this few short excerpts of abstracts of studies, words like essential, critical, these are painting the picture that this process is very important. And I think that I sort of laid the groundwork in the last video about reversing mitochondrial heteroplasmy when I talked about very briefly the process of mitophagy and mitochondrial biogenesis. And if you remember that graph, when there is an imbalance of mitophagy and mitochondrial biogenesis, either the wild type healthy mitochondria are going to win out and that population is going to be overall healthy and the organism is going to be overall healthy or the mutant mitochondria will win out. And so after we it, mitochondrial dynamics as a whole, and we dive into each of the types of mitochondrial dynamics, whether it be fission, fusion, mitochondrial biogenesis, or mitophagy, as well as mitochondrial quality control mechanisms, what our focus will be on will be what compares these dynamic events, and probably more importantly, what can we do to optimize and maximize that this is happening in a way that promotes maximal health for you and me. You're going to see that this is not exactly an easy topic to discuss because as as I'll tease here, mitochondrial dynamics are fairly straightforward for disease prevention, even disease reversal for a lot of diseases, in particular, obesity, insulin resistance, diabetes, neurodegenerative disorders, cardiovascular diseases. It seems to be more clear cut of what to do in order to reverse those processes, looking at these diseases from a mitochondrial lens and from a lens even of mitochondrial heteroplasmy. However, when we get into the realm of cancer, it becomes quite a bit more murky. And I just want to give you that nuance throughout this micro series because it's not exactly straightforward. I understand that it's frustrating, but a lot of this research is cutting edge. And unfortunately, it's not black or white. And I hope that you can see that as we go through this series. Okay, let's dive into some definitions here. Mitochondrial fusion dilutes dysfunctional proteins and mutated mitochondrial DNA by mixing mitochondrial proteins, mitochondrial DNA, and other matrix components to maintain mitochondrial homogeneity and functional stability. Mitochondrial fission, beyond affecting mitochondrial function and morphology, mitochondrial fission possesses other functions such as promoting mitochondrial transport, mitophagy, cell division, as well as apoptosis. And I would add mitochondrial quality control as part of that as well. As you can see here, two mitochondria fuse to become one big mitochondria, and then mitochondria can then have fission where they split in two and become two mitochondria. As you can see, higher efficiency and lower efficiency as we are in a calorie-restricted starvation or fasted state, your mitochondria will then become more elongated and more energy efficient at building ATP. And as we become overfed, hypernourished, elevated blood sugar, elevated calories, obesity, the mitochondria will then become more fragmented and have inefficient ATP synthesis. And what's not shown here is you'll have excess reactive oxygen species and oxidative stress as well. What also is shown here is when there's any transient depolarization of the inner mitochondrial membrane, there's some actions that's taken, whether it be fission or fusion. And then if it's sustained, that's when this mitochondria will be removed via mitophagy. I don't want to get into super detail with this slide. All I want to do is transmit complexity. There are a host of biochemical processes that drive both fission and fusion. Some of them, which we've seen before in the past, ROS, hypoxia through HIF1-alpha, AMP kinase, sirtuins, and mTOR. And then for fission, a couple names that we've I've barely touched on, but we'll see in detail during the mitochondrial biogenesis portion of this is PGC1-alpha and beta. And I think that's probably a, a, a really good place to end on. I just wanted to go over the basics of overall mitochondrial dynamics, the overall basics of the mitochondrial life cycle, why we have these different types of mitochondrial dynamics, and an overview of 
fission and fusion, and then we'll hit mitochondrial quality control, mitophagy, and mitochondrial biogenesis in separate videos. And I will sprinkle in fragments of different disease processes that are related to each one of these types of mitochondrial dynamics, mostly cancer, but because mitochondrial function and dysfunction are related to so many other pathologies and disease processes, I'm going to sprinkle in some of those as well. I think it'll be incredibly important to see these, especially the precancerous states like obesity, diabetes, and insulin resistance, because those states generally drive cancer formation through excess blood sugar, excess insulin, and insulin-like growth factor one, and all the signaling pathways downstream from those, which can drive accelerated growth and cancer. If you like videos like this, please share them with family and friends who potentially are dealing with these metabolic issues. Like the video if you liked it, and consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything, and it really gives us some feedback that you like what we're doing and you want to stay with us on this journey through mitochondria and health optimization. Until next time.